One of the most common frustrations in making molds and casting parts comes from parts sticking to molds. This is the number one source of problems cited by toolmakers and why we constantly investigate newer and better ways to seal and release models and molds to ensure easy part release. We're going to demonstrate three different release procedures. The first two are sacrificial releases, meaning they require reapplication each time the model or mold is used. Then we'll show a semi-permanent release system that retains its releasing properties through several uses. Sealing is required any time you work with wood, plaster, or sheet wax, since these materials are known to interact with tooling plastics. Applying a sealer, such as what we're doing here with this pure bristle brush, will not only prevent the moisture in the wood or plaster from reacting with the tooling plastics, it also smooths the surface. Here we are applying our Freeman Wood and Plaster Sealer, a fairly thin viscosity, lacquer-based coating on a piece of wood. And here is what the first application of the sealer looks like. After the first coat has dried, which will take about half an hour, you'll notice that the sealer has swelled the grain and made it rough. So you'll want to take sandpaper or Scotch-Brite and lightly sand it down to make it smooth again. Sanding is not necessary when working with plaster or sheet wax. When you're done, wipe it off with a cloth and then apply a second coat of sealer. After allowing the second coat to dry, you will again want to sand the wood very lightly and then wipe it off with a cloth. You are now ready to apply the release agents. After the sealer has been applied, it is time to cover the entire surface with Freeman Wax Release, a semi-paste typically applied with a brush. You may allow this coat to dry or immediately wipe off the excess with a cloth. We suggest at least two coats of wax release to make sure your entire part is covered evenly. Next, you'll apply two layers of Part-All PVA Mold Release, which is a polyvinyl alcohol that you can apply with a brush or a spray. PVA forms a thin film, almost like a plastic wrap, which serves as a barrier coat for any of the active ingredients in the epoxies, urethanes, or polyesters. The green color ensures complete coverage. Each coat will require a half hour of drying time unless you use a fan or air hose. Here you see the second coat being applied. Note how the material self levels, which makes using a spray unnecessary, although some people prefer to use a spray in order to prevent brush marks. After the second coat of PVA has dried thoroughly, you will apply a final coat of Freeman Wax Release. Be very careful when buffing this last coat. Do so very gently so as not to break through the layers of the PVA. Your part or model is now ready for casting. The only exception to this releasing procedure is when casting a urethane against another urethane, such as we're doing here, pouring our Repro FastCast urethane into a mold made out of Repro. In these cases, you should only apply the PVA once to either the model or the mold, but not both. Here, since we use the wax PVA wax procedure on the original model, we do not want to use PVA on the mold itself. Instead, we only apply three coats of wax release to the mold before casting our part. Otherwise, we risk having the solvents in the urethane react with the PVA in a way that forms a bond rather than enabling easy part release. Now we're going to show a semi-permanent release procedure on this epoxy mold that was just built and not yet been used. Even after several coats of wax release, the surface is still quite active, meaning there will be problems in achieving a satisfactory release from this tool as it is. We verify this by applying and removing a piece of masking tape. The resistance of the tape lets us know that the surface still requires more release agents, or in this case, an alternative release procedure. Before using semi-permanent release agents, it is imperative that the mold surface is clean. Here we are using Chemley's Mold Cleaner EZ, which removes any waxes or contaminants that may have remained on our mold after our initial cleanup. Only after this step is the surface ready to be sealed. Next, we apply two coats of Chemley's 15 sealer. 
developed by Chemtrend to seal mold surfaces, reduce mold porosity, and provide a base coat for the wide variety of ChemLease release agents, each tailored to various molding processes and requirements. This sealer is actually a silicone resin suspended in a solution that quickly evaporates upon application, leaving a thin, solid layer of silicone resin chemically bonded to the surface of our tool. We saturate a clean cloth to apply it, and then buff it with a second clean dry cloth. We allow 15 minutes between the first and second application, and then one hour after the second application, in order to give the solvents time to fully evaporate. Next we apply the Chemlease One FS release agent. This contains a higher concentration of silicone solids and less solvent than the Chemlease 15 sealer. Here we apply 5 coats, allowing 10 minutes between each application and 30 minutes after the final coat. We now have a far superior release on the surface of our tool, which we verify with the same masking tape test. Both sacrificial and semi-permanent release procedures have their own unique benefits and drawbacks. Although the semi-permanent release procedure is initially more involved than the sacrificial procedures, its many long-term benefits make it a compelling choice for many projects. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are released. This particular video is part of a much larger set of videos, originally released as a DVD, but now available in our extensive online video library, which you can view for free at freemanvideos.com.